What's up y'all, it's Shuffle, and this video will be a guide to Highwayman. This is the one y'all voted for as second in our Hero Guide series. So in this video, we'll talk about his strengths, weaknesses, how to play him, go over his skills, paths, his trinkets, and a few teammates that he excels with to help get you rolling. As always, of course, if you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up, leave your thoughts in the comments, check out the box under the video for all the cool links, like ways to support the channel, or Discord, and Twitch if you want to get more involved in the community. Starting off, let's talk about the strengths of Highwayman. What is he good at? He has a lot of reach, which means his damage is very flexible. He can hit pretty much any target with something good whenever he wants to. His next big strength is he is very consistent. So his damage output is consistent, his reach is consistent, his mobility is consistent. He's just a very, very consistent character, and that's really nice to have. His final major strength is one of his unlocked abilities, and that is Highway Robbery. Highway Robbery is a move we'll talk about later, but in short, it is a very powerful move to help mitigate tokens that enemies can sometimes spawn in large amounts like Riposte. Dismiss, of course, is not without his weaknesses. His first big one is he has no access to defensive plus tokens unless he steals them. This may not seem like a huge issue, but when you compare it to someone like Grave Robber, who can generate dodge plus consistently, Vessel who can give defensive tokens to people, or tanks that generate block plus and stuff. It means that Dismas does have a bit of mitigation, but he doesn't have as much mitigation as a lot of the other characters. His next big weakness is that even though his damage is really consistent, he doesn't have a super high damage ceiling. It was kind of this way in the first game. Consistently, you can have him hitting for 10, 15, critting for 24, and the like, unless you really sink a bunch of trinkets and quirks into him. But it becomes very difficult for him to do something like a 60 damage burning stars crit, for instance. His final weakness is that he really wants your mastery points. Mastery is good for everyone in the game, but Hyoman really takes off once you give him a few points to get him juiced up. Which means if you're not taking fights or if you're getting unlucky with mastery points, you're going to be stretched pretty thin because usually he wants at least three. The game plan with Highwayman is pretty straightforward, so since he's a really good damage dealer, you want him attacking the highest threats on the enemy's side. Usually he can reach it or have some way to deal with the tokens after a couple turns. So make sure that you are having him focus fire those important targets. My second tip on how to play him is to make sure that you have some kind of backup plan, which may be a little ambiguous as a term, but what I mean is that you should have some other ability for him to deal with situations that may arise that you're not ready for, such as having point blank shot in case he gets pulled up front, having duels advance in case he gets pushed to the back or your teammate gets moved out of position, or having robbery equipped in case some very rare enemy decides to spawn that gets a lot of tokens. And the reason I say this is because he doesn't need more than three or four moves equipped at one time to do his job, so the ones that you pick after that are your flex picks. My final tip on how to play Highway Man is to make sure that you feed him a lot of buffs. Give him your damage trinkets, give him your strength tokens, give him the crit tokens. Vestal should be putting Consecration of Light on him at all times, because he really excels when he gets all of that type of support. Now it's time to talk about Highwayman's skills and his paths. So we'll start off with Wicked Slice, which is a pretty stock damage move that gets decent damage 6 9 when it's maxed, or master I should say, plus crit. And it has Death Blow Resist Piercing. He has two moves that do this, but... Wicked Slice is not to be slept on, it's pretty good until you start unlocking his later stuff, so it's not a bad move at all. Next up is Pistol Shot, which is kind of ridiculous as a move. The damage isn't super stellar, but what it does when it's upgraded is it can stun a combo target. When you combine this with his ability to use Take Aim, which gives him a guaranteed crit token, he has a really good chance of stunning most things because for one, he can reach it, two, the other person is able to set him up for it in advance, and then three, he goes first on turn two if you're gonna do that. And the other thing too is when you critical hit something or score a critical hit is the bonus effects, like stuns, damage over time, debuffs, the chance to apply them increases by 20%. The game tells you this, but it's not something most people probably are aware of. So if an enemy has 40% stun resist, for instance, if you pistol shot them with a crit, their chance to resist is only 20. So his stuns have a good chance of sticking. And that makes pistol shot a really good ability if you have consistent combo generation. 
Duelist Advance is really good early especially, so if you don't have a lot of his moves unlocked, you'll probably be pressing this quite a bit. And the mastery is nice, the on-hit damage is good, the repose up to 3 is nice, the plus 1 on regular dodge is good, and it can get him out of rank 4. So it's a good move, overall. Tracking Shot recently, I believe, got buffed to uh, ignore stealth at base, which is nice because it didn't do that before. And this is an interesting move because it removes stealth, it combos the target, and they can't gain dodge for two rounds, which means that for two entire rounds, not just, you know, like if they get two actions, it'll block dodge. This is really good for a few enemies, not like every single enemy in the game because a lot of them are getting retooled to have block instead of dodge, but it's nice to have, especially since it's something you don't have to unlock later. All right, now we have take aim. This is the hands down best ability in the kit, except maybe robbery. That's the only other like amazing one, but take aim is super powerful. This thing has been nerfed once, possibly twice in its, uh, its lifespan. And it's very simple. It has a cooldown in one turn. You press it, it gets rid of blind. It gives them dodge and then it gives them uh, crit. And then when it's upgraded, it gives them speed and two crit. And so if there are not enemies that can blind you on turn one, you're pressing this because the damage consistency is much better than swinging twice. There are people that try and, you know, put a bunch of math together and say it's actually more consistent to keep swinging instead of using take aim. But it's it's really hard to argue with the benefit of guaranteed crits besides stress healing, applying effects like bleed or stun, as well as going first next turn. So take aim is a very, very powerful ability. And no matter what Highwayman build you're using, this should be on just because it is that good. And it's so good that when you start with two mastery points and you have Highwayman, your first one is probably your stress heal. This is your second one. It is that worth it until it gets nerfed. So we'll see if that happens, but can use it from anywhere. Incredibly powerful, cannot recommend this move enough. And it's interesting watching new players and streamers play this for the first time and they don't upgrade this because they don't quite know yet, but uh, it, it'll be fun watching them gradually get there. Point Blank Shot is really good in this one. High damage, the mastery gives it a really tight damage range, so it picks up that minimum damage. But in the end, it's not as important because you might take aim Point Blank Shot, but comboing the front target, doing a bunch of damage, knocking them back, all that's really good. This only really struggles against units that start with dodge or block potentially, but you know, if you can get rid of that for him or if you just don't care, it's a really good opener. Or you can just move into it because the fabled tried and true duels advance in a PBS combo, which was on the first game, is good in this one too. Grape Shot is pretty good for getting rid of tokens, but otherwise, if you're not playing Sharp Shot, it's not a great move just because it does a little bit of damage and that's it but when it's upgraded and you have sharp shot it becomes very strong open vein's a nice move it it's still a nice alternative to wicked slice because damage over time is really good for checking death blow over and over especially against enemies that get multiple turns and the damage is okay this isn't really super duper good outside of yellow hand but you know you can make it work with other stuff so it's not it's not bad at all Double Tap is similar to Wicked Slice in the fact that it pierces DBR, does about similar damage. But what's really nice about it is that it has a bit more range as well as it gets bonus damage if the target is low HP. This turns it into a very efficient boss killing move because a lot of bosses usually find themselves around the mid rank, at least in two and three. And so if they are there, since they have a larger HP pool because they're bosses, that means that you have more uptime on this damage bonus. So it's really good for closing out fights. And oftentimes, most bosses won't stand up to you using tank aim. They fall under half HP if it's upgraded, you know, from like a teammate's attack, and then you double tap them twice, go figure. And they're usually dead or dying by the turn or by the time you get both of those out. So it's a very good move, especially on sharp shot highway robbery this move is super cool so it removes tokens ignores dodge and when you upgrade it it steals those tokens and gives it to him instead the token theft is random 
Not quite sure what the calculation is, but if the enemy has like four tokens, you know, sometimes you'll take a block and a repost, or you'll take two block, or you'll, you know, take whatever they have. So it's not totally consistent, but it's still a great move because being able to take off block and dodge and stuff like that, a lot of characters can deal with that. This is more to get rid of those troublesome things that you don't want to get hit by, like strength or crit or even repost. Only a few enemies get repost, but you can steal it from them or destroy it. So it's very good for that. It's a shame you can't hit rank four. Double cross is a really good move. It's just that he has other stuff. So he gets block, he vulns the target twice when it's upgraded, and it does some okay damage, and it's a melee move, so. It's not bad. This is more of a, a support move, so if Highwayman's up front and rogue for his path, for instance, it's pretty good, or yellow hand, and you're just dropping vulnerable on targets for your teammates to, uh, to make use of. I'll start talking about paths. So rogue is pretty much the melee path, but what's funny is you can still use range skills, so he has two ways to buff point blank shot to be very good. And there are two ways to play rogue. You can do a melee build where he just stays up front and just swings over and over to keep that 25% damage, which is pretty nice. Or you can run something like point blank shot and someone else that can move back to keep him, you know, nuking the front line and getting repose for everyone else. So as I was saying, there's, there's a couple ways you can do this. You can run something like this and Wayne's gonna talk, but that's actually okay, you don't hear that. So, this way you have melee damage, take aim for, you know, crits and stuff, point blank shots so he can, you know, blast whatever's in front of him, duels advance if he needs to move, and then robbery, you can't use it in one, which is unfortunate, but, you know, if you go into two, you can use it, or you can run double cross, that's also good. And there are some interesting combos you can do with this. So you can, you can do like a frontline dance type of team where Highwayman uses point blank shot and he moves and then Runaway uses Dragonfly and she pushes back and this really decimates frontline setups if you want to do it that way. Or like I said, you just leave him up there and swing melee, but there's a lot of other ways you can have him move around to make use of the, uh, the damage bonus. So it's a pretty good path. Sharp Shot is currently his best path just because of the reach and the damage and for some reason he gets speed. I mean, this path basically has no downsides, so it is very powerful. It makes certain fights where you need reach a lot easier, and there's a couple ways to play it, but honestly, I would only suggest putting him in two and three. That's probably the best for it, and you have two really good loadout options. So the first one is this, where you, again, have take aim, then you have grape shot for the strength, you have double tap to execute, and you have pistol shot for reach, and you can have, you can open with point blank shot, and move them back and then have someone else I don't know, move them back up and you can spam point blank or you can keep it on in case he gets moved up front so he has a way out or you just take this off and give him robbery so he can shoot do a bunch of damage and then for utility he can just steal tokens and this highwayman goes on any team you don't have to build around this at all which is why it's so good i think i did that last section without sharp shot picked up here so let's rectify that Otherwise, Yellow Hand, I really like this path. It's not a super high damage path, which is why it doesn't seem as good as the others. But the utility in this one is really fun, and it's a little bit more tanky, so I really like Yellow Hand. But obviously, you get the more HP. Your range skills basically don't exist anymore, except for Tracking Shot, which will show off. And then when you attack enemies with melee damage, you can lower their bleed resist, which gives you some bleed synergy. And then your Highway Robbery will steal a positive token at all times, which means the base version destroys two and then steals one, or the upgraded version steals three, which is really cool, and it can be very good. And then the final thing may not seem like much, that Double Cross removes block because you go, well, I mean, it already vulnerables anyway, that removes block too, but with an upgrade like that, that means if the enemy has block already, your vulnerable doesn't cancel it out. It gets rid of the block first, and then your vulnerable gets to apply, so it has a better chance of sticking. But otherwise, Yell Hand is cool. Like I said, not high damage, but it's it's got some good utility. And so, a basic build for this is you could run Duelist and put him in like four or three just so he moves up and gets repost. But otherwise, I think this is pretty solid, so. 
you have take aim because you know on demand damage speed dodge is still nice open vein because it is a bleed centered pass so you get bleed damage you have robbery because the whole path is centered around the skill so you should be using it double cross because you still get some synergy which can be nice and then finally instead of like i said duelist you could use tracking shot because this doesn't do damage so you don't care about the damage penalty on range abilities but it has a lot of utility now by blocking dodge taking off stealth and comboing targets either for himself with open main or for a teammate so as i said this is a big utility path and if you run it there are some bleed synergy characters you can run like hellion and jester if you really wanted to but it's not required now let's talk about some trinkets for Highwayman, his class trinkets and some other ones that might be good. And we'll start off with Curse Coin. This thing is insane just because the 5% damage per positive token means that you can hit take aim and get a bunch of positive tokens and then get bonus damage. I think this is supposed to be used in conjunction with robbery because that way you steal tokens and then get repose. But it synergizes so well with take aim that that's probably what you're doing so it's a really good one if you can find it and staying under a hundred relics is not hard as well as minus 15% crit on someone that can generate crit tokens also doesn't matter this thing is just pure upside then we have rat skull if he goes first he gets a crit token 66% of the time the rest of it you don't really have to worry about the versus creature thing doesn't come up too often I believe and then the duelist advance immobilizing you. This is supposed to be something like you duelist into rank one and then immobilize yourself. So you get two point blank shots. But again, you don't need it to do that. The going first crit is good enough. And with sharp shot, it's not hard to get his speed up to be the fastest. Then tormenting locket bonus melee crit. Good. Don't even have to run open vein essentially, but it is nice if you do have that. And then open vein deals more bleed damage. And then you're probably not using range attacks. So this is a really good trinket. All of his trinkets are good. And they're they're all just more damage, go figure. Because he's a damage dealer. But as far as some other stuff goes, he can make use of a lot of trinkets. So any of the flat damage ones, like Raven's Reach, Gnarly Knuckles, those are good for him. The on-turn stuff, like turn starts for strength is good. There's, where is it? I think it's the Patriarch, if I can find it. Is it back up here? Yeah, it is. Okay. So pairing Patriarch, even though he can't make plus tokens for defense, you can get a trinket that'll do it for him because he can make a lot of dodge. And so this way you get dodge plus at the end of the turn. And that's really nice to have as well. But he gets some really good trinkets out of the sprawl too. So snappy swing. If his speed is eight or higher, he gets 50% chance of getting a crit token. Doesn't even matter about the burn damage. So you just get this. He's a really good user of compass because he wants all of these stats and he can manage his own stress with crits. And lightning element, if his speed's up, he gets dodge and he can randomly burn something, which is really nice. And then smoldering hymnal. So all these come from the sprawl, by the way, these three. And they're all really good for him because he can go first with his speed token. So this way, if you get a killing blow, you have a chance of an extra turn. And if he goes first, he gets strength. So like the rest of it doesn't really matter that much like that that burn speed but he can make use of all of that which is nice and then there should be yes okay so I forgot about the the cultist trinkets he is one of the best users of temptation because you know you can usually put him somewhere safe in the party and he really likes having extra turns plus he kills things very quickly especially if he has more turns so that way the minus death lore resist doesn't usually come into play because you're killing stuff too quick. He's also probably the best user of Wounding Words, which is, you know, huge bonus damage. And then, actually, the Murder Weapon, too. Which, if you find this, you know, instant kill against non-bosses on crit, on a guy that can give himself crit tokens. There's a lot of good trinkets for him. Even uh, Sundial. Or Pocket Watch, that's what it is. So, extra turn, and then stun himself sometimes. You know, just... There's so many things that he makes use of. As long as it's some kind of damage... Or if it gives him a little defense, like there's almost nothing bad to put on him. To round out the video, let's talk about some teammates for Highwayman. You don't have to run all three of these at the same time. I just did it for the footage. The first one we'll talk about is Jester. The reason Jester is very good is because he gives him Encore. 
which can make it so you can take aim right after. You know, you take aim, attack, next turn you can take aim again if you have to. And Highwayman just likes having extra turns to do more damage, as well as Jester's random bleed synergy and movement and stuff like that to help Highwayman stay where he wants to be. You can do things like point blank shot and then battle ballot to point blank again. Another great teammate for him is Hellion, mostly because of Hellion's ability to reach most places with some good damage. She has trouble hitting rank three, which Highwayman doesn't. She also has some bleed synergy if you want to use that with Highwayman's open vein or her own bleed skills. Then there's one other small nice thing about it is if you are running something like Ravager that wants you to be up front, and Hellion gets moved backwards, Highwayman can point blank shot to shove her back into rank one. The final really good teammate for Highwayman is Vestal. Plague Doctor kind of accomplishes the same thing with Emboldening Vapors, but the reason is mostly because she can drop Consecrations for him. So Consecration of Light gives him damage every turn that he doesn't have access to, like Strength, and then the upgraded version of Fortitude can give him defense tokens that he can't normally get either. Otherwise, Highwayman can work with a lot of people, but these three do have a bit more synergy with him, I feel like. All right, y'all, that's gonna do it for the video. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you're thinking down below in the comments. Any other tips or synergies you found with Highwayman? Got questions? Feel free to throw them at me or join Discord. Next up, I believe, is Bounty Hunter in terms of the voting, but I'll have to double check. So as always, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.